Hi, in this Lightboard session, we're going to talk a bit more about the three layered architecture or the API led connectivity and what each of those layers really means. Now, when you're looking at trying to shoehorn your individual application needs for integration into this layered architecture, you've got to understand that breaking apart this layers will. It's for the intention of having a coherent architecture at the end. So if you've got a client application, now a client application can mean many things. So it could be the system that's making an HTTP call, it could be making a SOAP call, or it could be something that's triggering a file getting created. So there's a range of different ways that you can get a, a notification or an event out of a system. So be a bit flexible with what you regard as a client. It is the originator of the request, whatever that request is. It could be a file, message, HTTP request, and so on. So the client is going to be sitting up at the, at the top level. Now, it's an application. So these are, this is an app. And there's going to be some sort of system involved that data needs to get, get to or be requested from. So it's the downstream system in this situation. So down the bottom, we also have apps. But these are ones that are acting as servers of information or as a system of record, if you are familiar with that terminology. So these are both apps. Now, you may find that you have the same app at the top and the bottom. I think this is something where people get a bit they're twisting themselves up trying to come up with a diagram where they have Salesforce at the top uh, or at the bottom and trying to draw lines all over the place. So my recommendation is split apart the client interaction and the server interaction. So if you're serving up a request, put yourself down the bottom. The same application could and probably should appear at the top and the bottom. So let's talk about the top layer, which is the experience layer. Now, you can think of it as an API, but my recommendation is that sometimes the term API has a, a, an assumption with the person that you're talking to. API might mean for them a RESTful JSON type service. And a lot of what you're going to be doing in this experience layer is not going to be related to APIs. So going a bit deeper dive on the sort of things that might be in here, it will be, some will be APIs. Absolutely. But others, other types of applications that you're building here are polling or running on some sort of scheduled task to go and retrieve values out of a database. So they're not necessarily going to fit nicely into what you may have come to understand API to mean. There's still an interface. So technically, yes. Practically, people might be confused. So if we think about whatever the needs are of the client, that's what the experience part is. It's the client experience. So in this case, let's say this app is going to be using, say, HTTP. So if they're making a call through here using HTTP. Now, this could be a RESTful type API that you're exposing. It could be an RPC style of thing. It really doesn't matter. It's whatever's needed to get the job done with the client. OK, so at the experience level, you need some sort of integration application that understands that client and can unpack the request to do something more. So in this case, it will have something to do with the client. So if this is client X, this will be the client X experience application, integration application. So let's look at another example of a client. And this would be something like maybe we've got a, an app so we'll call this one app Y. And maybe this one creates a file sitting on a directory somewhere. So this is the part where I think calling it an API, yeah, it is. The, the API is triggered by a file getting produced, but perhaps not as understandable for a lot of people. Now, when you're building your Mule application to deal with this particular client experience, it's going to be using maybe a scheduler. So it's going to be a scheduler type of application. So it's going to be running on a periodic frequency to pick up a file and then do something with it. So it's still the client experience. It still belongs somewhere. It needs somewhere to live. So 
And that's, and that's a different type of client experience. Now, other examples, you may have something that goes into a messaging queue. So if you've got a messaging queue or topic, so some other sort of app, and it puts messages into a queue, and you need something to retrieve the stuff off the queue and do something with it. So again, you still need a different type of client experience, but this one might be listening to a JMS. So it picks up that, and then it's ready to go into the rest of your ecosystem. So there's some examples of things that belong in the experience layer. They may not feel like they're APIs, but they are the interface into the rest of your landscape. OK, now if we go down to the next level, um, we are starting to talk about business processes, if you like. So the, these, these should have a reasonably close mapping to something that your business understands. So if you're dealing with customer information or your, um, your accounting transaction uh, capabilities. So these APIs, now these bottom two layers are critical to getting the reuse out of your ecosystem. So there's some overarching principles that we're trying to address. Not repeating ourselves, which is don't repeat yourself. Keep it simple and succinct. So these principles drive a lot of what you're going to be doing in terms of decomposing what would otherwise be a big lump. You're going to break it apart so that you can address your reuse, keep the overall architecture simple, and get an overall clarity of the insulation between your different client and servers. Okay, so that insulation, it's layers to try and give you flexibility. All right, now let's go and talk about this process layer. So now these ones, I would say picking a RESTful JSON type approach makes a lot of sense to me uh, because over the years I've, I've learned that XML, although it used to have a lot better tooling, uh, has the fundamental flaw that if you add an extra field that comes back to someone who's using a schema, by default you'll find that schemas are a bit inflexible, so adding an extra field breaks everything. So if you want flexibility in your bottom two layers, settling on a format that can accommodate change. And the most common change I've seen is adding extra fields coming back. So yes, there's adding new functionality. That's not a breaking change on various approaches. But I think when you've got a data structure that's coming back and you add an extra couple of fields, you don't want every existing consumer having to go and make code changes to accommodate that. They should just ignore those fields. And that's what we need in the bottom two layers here because these are to avoid repeating ourselves in talking to these ser downstream servers and also wrapping up whatever logic we need at a, I guess, a business process level. All right, so if we look at our process APIs, um, so let's talk about, uh, say, the nouns that we might come across. Those could be one way to come up with the naming for these. So if you had orders or transactions, customer, but just be, just be mindful that it's unlikely that you'll be able to settle on one unified understanding of all the operations and data structures for nouns that cross different organizational boundaries. Okay, it's a bit of an anti-pattern to try and do too broad a, you know, bringing order to the universe or bringing order to the chaos. Um, so you may want to have these divided by different domains. So if you've got different departments or different silos that have sprung up in your organization, chances are those organizational silos are there for a reason because they talk different language. They have one understanding of customer and another understanding of customer. And every time I've seen efforts to try and unify everyone's view of customer, it's going to take 20 people in a room and no one will get to any sort of agreement because everyone's right and everyone's wrong when you talk to the other side of the business. So in order to avoid getting too down into hundreds and hundreds of fields worth of laborious meetings, trying to narrow the scope a bit and making the effort to try and simplify things and avoid repetition, making it per domain is probably a more achievable thing. And overall, this should not be something that you try and plan out the next 10 years worth of changes here and start building out every single option because chances are it's not going to be the same landscape several months into the project. So whatever you planned 
you'll have to throw away and redo. So building this from the ground up is an important thing as well. So that, that puts a limit on how much you have to deliver at any given time, reduces the complexity, makes it more achievable, and means that you can respond to changes. So if you build out a whole lot of functionality for this system here, and then you find six months down the track that this system is being decommissioned, all of that wasted effort that you spent doing analysis and design, well, you've avoided that because you only built out what you need. So another principle here that I like is you ain't going to need it. So only build out what you need. So if you're going to build out create, retrieve, update, delete for everything, then maybe no one's going to use the create. Maybe no one's going to use the delete. OK, so that functionality, if it's not tested in production, is a risk. And it is also then technical debt, because you are carrying and building functionality that you may never use, and you still have to support. So, so avoiding that, build it as you go. And that's what we're trying to do here. So we're starting with each use case, building out the landscape, working out what we need to build and what we need to modify, and then layering it so that you get those different purposes for your different APIs. OK, so process APIs, I think that's enough on the sort of things that you might have there. So let's put, let's talk about orders. Now, let's say we've got multiple systems that orders live in. OK, this is a common thing that you may need to bring together data. And it could be that some of the orders are in this system and the others are over here based on geographic region. It could be that some of the fields are in this system and some are in this system. So the aggregation logic needs a home. And that's what we've got at the process level. So if I put these other apps in here, so if this was a, this is an order system, and we'll call this one ABC, and this is DEF, then you may find that when you're trying to bring together your orders information out of these systems, you're going to have the same name here, but you may want to prefix it with the name of the system because this is specific to this system and this is specific to this system. So the retrieval logic for this is quite different to this. So in order to not muddy up this and get this really bloated, we break it into different APIs. All right, so that would be, in this case, this is DEF. And this one's ABC. OK, now this bottom layer is the system APIs. So just like process APIs, we're trying to get reuse. We're trying to create a home for functionality that talks to a system. Now, common question I get is, what should we do at this level? Should this be one per system? Should this be f more fine-grained, more coarse-grained? Um, I'd certainly suggest that a good starting point is per system. And then if it is a particularly complex system, you may want to break it apart more. So breaking it by the domains that live inside that system. So if you had a, a legacy system that has two different functional areas, you may, for reasons of keeping it, uh, well, keeping it simple, break it into different APIs. But a good starting point is think, for each system I talk to, I need a system API, at least. I need at least one. So one or more per system that you're talking to. OK, so and then let's look at the, the overall call stack here. So if I've got the client calling its experience API, then it makes calls on a process API. And then the process API, it may make one or more calls to system APIs, which then make calls down to those systems. So, and this sort of shows some of the things you might need to consider. So, my tips on this, don't try and have just application at the top uh, or at the bottom. If it, if it is both client and server, put the box in both places. Uh, start with one per uh, system that you're talking to at the system API level and break apart if it gets too complex. Because remember, you're shielded by the process APIs. So the process APIs, if you need to break apart this API into multiple APIs, this is the, the, the client in this case of a, an API. So this might need some changes, but it shouldn't ripple on to the rest of the organization. Now, if you build this as you're going, sticking to, to the Yagni principle, then as you bring on new types of use cases or new systems, you should be able to then make use of existing functionality 
And if there is extra functionality that you need to put in as part of your project, you can either add that functionality to an existing API, because this is a placeholder if you like, and there could be entirely different things that you need to do like transactions and so on. So whatever you need to add for the project can overlay onto your existing landscape. You can build just what you need. And hopefully that gives you some idea on some of my tips with the three-layered architecture.